All right, so in, in one of Stein's examples of using other APIs, he had the Delta API as an example, and it just so happens, what a perfect segue that we have here, that Miguel from Delta Airlines is here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, to, to talk uh, some about your lessons. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you. Those, not, those are not my slides. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Miguel Quintero. I'm an API designer with uh, Delta. And I uh, just had a question. How, how many of you have heard of uh, the concept of a dojo? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's pretty good, pretty good. So, yeah, we, uh, so my talk is about um, the role of the dojo in our digital transformation at Delta, roughly about going on three years now. So a little bit about Delta, 250, 200 million uh, passengers in our network, uh, 300, 300 destinations, over 50 countries. Uh, Atlanta is our headquarters, uh, largest, world, uh, largest hub in the world, uh, 1,000 departures to 225 destinations powered by an awesome uh, Delta family of 90,000 people. Um, best US airline uh, ranked by TPG, that's the, the that points uh, guy uh, website, best workplace for women, and, and that point uh, resonates with me because I have two daughters and one of them is uh, chosen to go into the IT field, so we're doing our part, women in IP, uh, in API. Uh, best workplace for millennials and top company for uh, to work as a software engineer. So that's a little bit about myself. I've been at Delta for two years and in IT for uh, 27 years. Uh, started out as a support engineer, uh, then switched to uh, software engineering, um, mostly back in work, and that's how I many about five, six years ago, discovered APIs, and I haven't looked back since. When I recently joined Delta, I heard of the, uh, that we were uh, planning to do a dojo, so I uh, jumped at the, the opportunity. Uh, I've had, uh, prior to coming to Delta, I've done uh, two dojos, uh, you know, short, uh, short dojos. Uh, and that's, uh, I touched myself at the uh, Delta Museum. Uh, that's uh, adjacent in our, our, in our Delta campus in uh, Atlanta. So what's, uh, what is a dojo? So we take, in, we take the, the concept from a Japanese culture. Basically, it means a place of the way, a, a place of, uh, of immersive learning. Um, and so in text, text speak, it basically is a, you know, a, a learning, an immersive learning environment within an organization where we take product teams and we help them uh, learn new skills uh, and learn new ways of you know, new ways of working, and then, and this is key, uh, we, we basically they take the, the, those new skills and apply them to their, their current day-to-day uh, -day activities, to their current uh, uh, to their current challenges. A little bit of the history of the dojo uh, started out with uh, setting up an Agile Center of Excellence, Center of Excellence. Uh, so started doing Agile, now going towards uh, actually doing Agile from being Agile, but uh, that's not enough. So shortly thereafter, I kicked off the speed to market beyond Agile, where we uh, laid out a strategy of what uh, teams are supposed to look like, the Kanban, Scrum, two pizza teams. Uh, they're, they're going to deploy what type of cloud. We have a pass environment. Uh, you know, uh, going to also uh, implement uh, DevOps, and the, the same teams are going to hopefully create APIs that will uh, be added to our API API catalog. So that's um, and. Now, b b roughly around that time, uh, we visited other companies who were doing dojos, and in particular, I had the chance to visit the uh, Target, uh, Target Dojo. They've been at this for five years, and they've, they've done a great uh, job. We, we did learn a lot from them. Um, next, we basically, from that strategy, we created several COEs, Centers of Excellence. So we created uh, uh, DevOps, Cloud, Security, 
uh, an API COE. I'm a member of that team. We're roughly about 15 people. We handle the governance and the API management. But I like to think of the team that basically all around the API uh, evangelists. Uh, so we have now we have uh, the people. We found the place. We, we found a place, and then essentially we just basically, uh, the leadership found some teams who, were, who wanted to uh, be involved in this program and, and learn and go, and go faster. So we just kicked it off. Uh, we just basically started, uh, we had several, six or seven teams at the beginning, and we kept going and going and going, and finally uh, we, we uh, fixed the place. So we basically in the beginning it was just like a giant room with uh, just paint, uh, just painted, and you know, uh, desks and uh, table. I mean, and monitors of just rows and rows of monitors, and uh, we, we fixed it. Added some furniture and TVs, and then we officially launched the dojo. Uh, since then, we've had uh, companies like Honeywell and uh, TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority, visit us and just you know share some of the learnings. And we also kicked off a satellite dojo up in. Uh, uh, MSP, that's in Minneapolis. That's where uh, we, ha we have an IT presence out of the result of the uh, uh, Delta acquisition of Northwest. That's where the, yeah, Northwest used to be. So a little bit of evolution. So we, our, our initial strategy is um, so team focused. Uh, that's our basically holistic approach. Uh, started out with eight weeks and the and the curriculum came from essentially from the different COEs, uh, being myself in the API COE. So we're, you know, I was evangelizing uh, the our standards, our style guides, and so on and so forth. Uh, going into 2019, uh, we've uh, adapted a bit. Uh, we had more teams who so learned how to scale. The, uh, kept uh, the team focused idea, flexible duration. We changed it from uh, our eight traditional eight week immersive experience to about uh, anywhere from two to six weeks, depending on the, the team maturity. Uh, also, yeah, again, trying to you know, build a scale team of, uh, of teams. So um, a process starts by doing an initial intake. Uh, we get to meet the team and we get to listen to them. Um, where, what are the, where are they at in their digital transformation? Are they uh, trying to get better at DevOps? And um, I'm there asking, okay, where have you built any APIs? And so on and so forth. So we started out with the lower half of uh, the traditional eight weeks where we set up a curriculum uh, that involves our style guides, the best practices, uh, talking about REST, HTTP, standards, and so on and so forth. Um, through a period of eight weeks, uh, daily sessions with every team, uh, and then we do constantly doing some measuring. Uh, on the top, we have the Dojo Light. That's where we adapted our strategy a little bit, and uh, we, uh, depending on the team maturity, we won't go, went from uh, two to six weeks. Sometimes I've had teams that are saying, "Okay, we're uh, we have pipelines, we're doing DevOps, but they want to get better at Agile, or they just have some issues with uh, APIs, and so on and so forth." Um, as far as the check-in, uh, we started out with a 30, 60, 90 day check-in, but that didn't work quite well uh, because we just, we just had a lot of teams and we just basically getting busier and busier. So essentially what, what I did and what the coaches did was to follow up. I go around the company a lot just uh, keeping in touch with the teams and seeing basically what's going on and what APIs they're putting out there, what sort of issues they have, and any, any, any kind of questions, and just basically get a pulse of what, uh, what's going on with those team. Uh, our facilities, our ori original design uh, was a capacity of seven teams, two in MSP, and then we set up the uh, remote location in MSP. In 2019, uh, increase that capacity. We planned more capacity to, to 14 teams, and uh, we added mobbing stations. Uh, how many of you have heard of mobbing? Not many. Excellent. So basically, if you remember, um, mo mo if you remember pair programming, so mobbing is basically the same team working on the same problem at the same time. And I've, I've never had tried that before, but it's, it's really really cool. You have an individual who. Uh, who sits in front of a computer, you have a monitor, a very big monitor, and that person's called the driver, uh, and the rest of the team are called the navigators. The driver just simply 
types. That's all they do. They don't think too much. They're just basically typing code or running commands, etc. And the other navigators are basically sending, basically telling that person what to do. And uh, the ideal team, maybe seven. We have some larger teams, and we they basically rotate about every every 10 uh, minutes, and that's really worked wonders. I mean, the whole team really learns at the same time. There's no issues with knowledge transfer. Everyone's learning. I mean, at the same time, it's just, uh, I mean, it's pretty, the productivity is pretty, pretty awesome. So I use that for design. Um, and in particular, I try to get the, usually you get a mix of teams. We get uh, some developers, some business analysts, some QA folks. Um, and rarely, rarely do we get someone from the business or any subject matter expert in the particular space, whether whether it's cargo bags or sky uh, lounge access, uh, you know, or loyalty program, etc. So that's tough. But we we uh, doing you know mobbing, designing while mobbing. We you know get to increase the chance of uh, sort of uncovering any any gaps uh, in designing the uh, the APIs. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Go back. Uh, so that's uh, our space. So that one right here, that's uh, Minneapolis with the new uh, furniture that used to be just uh, like a, it's just a row of uh, uh, chairs. That's a uh, mobbing station. They're probably doing some Ansible work there, some DevOps stuff. That's um, another mobbing station where they're probably deploying the OpenShift. That's our past platform. Uh, that's also Minneapolis. And that's where I usually hang out most of the time. Uh, that's in, in Atlanta. Um, I mean, that used to be just no, just white paint, tables, no furniture, no windows, nothing. But hey, we, we, uh, we get it done. So some 2019 wins, uh, 29 teams have gone through uh, the longer experience. 12 teams have done the dojo light. Uh, we've, most of the teams through the dojo have put out uh, roughly, we have 131 APIs in production and 1,600 designs. Those, those designs are, are maintained in our on-prem uh, Swagger Hub instance. Um, and, and just uh, another item here, the, uh, the Dojo participant, you can see here in that graph that when we started uh, just a regular curriculum, uh, it took a while to you know, deploy workloads, but uh, once we started mobbing, it, just, uh, you know, it was just incredible. The productivity just, it was amazing. We just did things in a few hours, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think uh, all in all, um, we've had a pretty good response. Um, we had uh, there we have some, some examples of some metrics of a team. The, we have like a, during an in-tech session, they do a self-assessment. The blue is at the beginning. And then the orange is when they leave. And uh, that's uh, one of many examples. I think the, the teams are very receptive. Again, that's the, uh, the Atlanta, the Atlanta uh, Dojo. That's a team who, uh, I'll talk about that team in a second. Uh, that team just uh, gra you know, graduated, uh, the, and there's some mobbing. And uh, well, I don't know about that. Maybe they're mobbing as well. So, um, but. You know, there's always, there's always a but. There's always some challenges. For example, metrics. Metrics are difficult. Um, don't, we don't have automated metrics from those teams' pipelines. I just, from an API perspective, I try to basically uh, see, you go out and see, well, the sort of metrics, are, you know, with the APIs in production. Uh, and also the, the, some of the developer experience and find out what other, uh, you know, what consumers have gone through, what sort of experience they've had. Modernization is never done. Basically, uh, there, the different, different parts of the company, airport customer service under the wing, above the wing, uh, tech ops, uh, cargo, loyalty, HRIT, everyone's trying, to, everyone's trying to learn how to do APIs. So I get to go work with all those teams, and it's a bit of a challenge. I've barely been here two years, so I barely know some of the, some of the space. Uh, just uh, yesterday, they deployed uh, the BAGS uh, API uh, from exposed from the mainframe. Mind safe shifts, classic problem, design first versus code first. I uh, am you know, having issues trying to, these are good developers, these are good people, but I'm trying to 
trying to convince them that they can go uh, just as fast from uh, from design first uh, first approach. Um, API style guides. I explain to them why those are important. Since we, you know, we have a style of doing APIs, then that can lead to some sort of odd behaviors and confusion as well. So that's why that's uh, that's important. I mean, I can't constantly go through that one. Uh, API fastness. That's a term that I borrowed from API handyman. Uh, again, I explaining the team. Look, uh, don't just uh, you know, especially developers, don't just rush to code. Try to. Um, you know, through the mobbing and getting, you know, hopefully getting some, you know, search dramatic experts in there and uh, think about just focus on the design and um, you'll, you'll get it done. I mean, uh, at the center, there's a contract, you can do code gen, uh, it's code, so there's uh, pipeline possibilities, you could generate uh, server stuff, I mean, SDK, server stuff, et cetera, but it's still, uh, it's still a challenge. API-centric design sometimes, uh, you know, not just a tech problem, but sometimes since I don't have business folks in there, I try to uh, sort of send the me sort of through the teams that are in there, try to basically convey those some concepts so that they eventually convey those to the business. Uh, sometimes it's worked well, but usually it's a challenge. Legacy, again, that's similar to MindShift. Lots of folks don't, uh, uh, they're just used to ways of doing things. And of course, exposing legacy hardware, it's been, uh, it's been a challenge. Uh, again, a big one here, uh, consistency. Uh, I like to use the example of Norman doors. Uh, that's, I, I came out of that, uh, that term through, uh, when I came across a book, uh, by Don Norman, the design of everyday things, and that's just an excellent example. Uh, I think that's the one that relates the most with developers, where you you have this you have these doors, and you don't know if, if you're pulling or pushing or sides or up or down or left and right. And I've actually come across a delta. I've come across a a uh, area where they do have those doors, and you know you you do get stuck. I think that's. Um, you know, developers can relate to that, but then they still go back to code. So it's it's a challenge. So Take that, multiply that by all of that, by the number of teams that go in, and each of them have a culture, and that's it's one heck of a challenge. If you, but it's, it's fun. I, I find that the, this kind of work very rewarding. A few months ago, that team who just graduated, they, uh, they're about a group of 75 people come from, coming from a SOAP background. So that's basically almost this entire room. So you can imagine, I had them for eight weeks. So I had a team right here, talk about some design stuff, I don't know, the team over here. So basically for eight weeks, I was going two to three sessions per day, per team. It was, I mean, it's a lot of fun, but uh, I mean, that's a huge, huge challenge. Uh, and, and right now that team's put out 17, 17 MPIs in uh, production and, and, and learning, they're still learning. So lessons learned, basically be flexible. Sometimes there's day-to-day uh, -day work that gets in the way of the dojo, gets in the way of the immersive experience. Um, you know, we're not afraid to experiment, so we tried, I tried the mobbing. Uh, I don't have all the answers exposing, uh, you know, uh, legacy environments uh, via, you know, using APIs. It's, uh, it's been a challenge for me. I've uh, never done that kind of work before. Uh, and of course, tons of mistakes and, and uh, you know, definitely uh, you got to listen to your, have to listen to your teams. Earlier this year, uh, we also partnered with uh, other organizations in the uh, Delta, and uh, we threw in. Uh, so I sent some Dojo participants to to uh, participate in a, a hackathon we had, and again, so they can see firsthand what they learned at the Dojo, right? So 17 APIs consumed, discoverability is an issue, uh, the uh, quality of API, uh, quality of the documentation, APIs, uh, you know, having some consistency issues. This is some of the things that we taught. Uh, some folks didn't have a project while at the dojo, uh, but now they, they, get to, they get to see that firsthand, and the, you know, the hackathon was really, was really fun. So what's next? Uh, again, scaling, uh, curriculum. I, I'm constantly, as an API designer, constantly researching uh, RFC, specs, standards, where may, maybe next is uh, GraphQL or async. Uh, I think there's some, uh, lots of opportunities there. And uh, well, we need a lot of help. I mean, I mean, can you imagine? So uh, we need some more coaches. So we're trying to, as we work with teams, we're trying to develop, um, you know, a few people here and there who uh, who are very uh, passionate about the technology and about about uh, about sharing. So, and uh, that's it. Thank you.
Excellent. Questions for Miguel? All right. I don't want to steal your opportunity from anybody, but uh, um, you mentioned um, uh, async API? Yes. So I don't really care about GraphQL, but um, on async API, what do you think would be an interesting uh, uh, use case for you at Delta? And by the way, thank you very much for the, the draw introduction. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we, we've looked at, we started looking at doing research on the specs. We're going to uh, do a proof of concept around maybe on our bag space, our baggage handling space. There's a lot of uh, eventing going on in that, in that space. And so uh, lots of communication with the mainframe. Uh, that's Deltamatic. I mean, I mean, at the center of Delta is, is the mainframe and so on and so forth. So, so yeah, that's uh, ongoing work, and we're. I think this uh, async would be a good fit. Thank you for your question. All right. Any, any other hands? There There's we are. Someone up there, lady up there. Hi, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. A question about discoverability. The problems you're having, do you mean discoverability within your own teams, or you mean for outside developers to use your APIs? Outside developers to use our APIs. Even, even internal developers to use our API. I mean, we have a developer portal, and I'm constantly talking about discoverability. OK, just simple use case. OK, look, you're thinking about uh, writing an API, but before you do that, uh, go out to the portal. Just getting that thought process going, that's where uh, we have a bit of, a, bit of an issue. Just uh, people just want to write APIs, but not think, so OK, the, some of the reusability possibilities, and that's the whole point of APIs, the, the, the reuse, right? And so it's, uh, you know, it's a constant issue there, but we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Thank you. All right, how about another round of applause for Miguel? Okay.